You may not know the names of the current members of the Ohio Supreme Court, but the decisions they make on issues of business, medical, insurance, and criminal matters have a major impact on you and your family. Three of the seven seats on the court are up for election this fall. In one race, Republican incumbent Justice Terrence O'Donnell is squaring off against Democrat Mike Skindle. Skindle is an attorney who is currently an Ohio State Senator serving the 23rd District in the Cleveland area. From 1998 to 2002, he was a member of the Ohio House of Representatives. Ohio currently elects its judges, but many people feel they should be appointed by the governor or a nonpartisan committee. What do you feel is better for the community and why? That question depends uh, upon what are the goals you're, you're getting to when electing a judge or appointing a judge. Most people say that they would like uh, this merit selection of judges to take away the influence of money in judicial races. The problem with that is under most models uh, uh, of merit selection in other states, they all require an election, a retention election sometime down the line, and that brings the money back into the election. So merit selection does not uh, solve the issue of how money influences uh, judicial races and judicial decisions. In the legislature, I have advocated for what Arizona has, which is um, uh, uh, public financing of judicial elections. In public financing of judicial elections, you reach the goal of removing money uh, from influencing uh, judicial decisions. If you're elected as justice, will you make your decisions based on your political affiliation or what you feel is best for the people of Ohio? As a justice, I uh, pledge to be fair and uh, impartial. Uh, but to ensure that everybody has a voice uh, in the Ohio Supreme Court. Uh, it's not a matter of uh, political philosophy. So all the judges bring a political philosophy, a life philosophy to the court. Uh, but what you want to do uh, is, is try to look at the facts and apply those facts to the law. And uh, you give deference to previous decisions of, of, of prior courts. Uh, and you also give deference to the legislative enactments of the Ohio General Assembly. And you take a look at the facts and apply it uh, to that law and, and do that in a way that is fair and impartial. There seems to be a philosophical difference of viewpoint on the court about the punishment of juvenile offenders. In your opinion, should juveniles be treated differently from adults in all cases? Do you believe there are some punishments that are just too harsh for juvenile offenders? Historically, we have always treated juveniles differently than adults. The reason why is uh, a juvenile offender does not have the maturity um, or the development, the mental development, uh, to distinguish right from wrong um, uh, during their youth. So therefore, we treat them differently. And yes, they should have uh, differences uh, in how we handle their cases as well as sentencing uh, of those cases. Uh, there may be particular cases based upon uh, uh, the facts brought before a judge that a juvenile should be treated in the same manner as an adult, depending upon whether they've matured and have had the mental development uh, that an adult would. Uh, under those circumstances, then, under those extreme cases, um, the juvenile should be treated as, a, as an adult. Many people feel that justice is for sale in Ohio due to the influence of campaign contributions to Supreme Court justices. How can you assure all Ohioans that your decisions will be fair and unbiased in light of the fact that you're receiving campaign contributions from interest groups that expect you to vote their way? What's important is if you're sitting as a justice uh, and you're hearing a case, you should not be taking money from a party. That's Ethics 101. Uh, when you're a justice and a party's before you, you should not be taking money from that individual. Outside of that circumstance, you look to see what type of relationship uh, you have had with a particular party and to see if you can be fair and in balance. Uh, and if you cannot be fair uh, and impartial, then you must remove yourself uh, from the bench, uh, from hearing that particular case. There's been a lot of discussion lately about judges legislating from the bench, effectively rewriting the laws that the legislature has previously written. How do you feel about that issue? I do not believe that uh, a role of a judge is to write laws uh, uh, in our state. We have a constitutional democracy made up of three branches of government. 
It is the role of the, the governor and the legislature to enact policy, and it's the job of the legislature to enact the laws when the governor signs it. The role of the court in our constitutional democracy is to review the law and apply the facts of a particular situation coming before it uh, to that set of laws already enacted uh, by the legislature. The only role of the legislature in reviewing the actual law or tampering with it is if the legislature is ambiguous or unclear in writing the law or if the law is actually uh, some way unconstitutional. As a Supreme Court Justice, what would you do to ensure that people in poverty, people that are underrepresented or otherwise disenfranchised have equal access to the justice system? One of the most important things is uh, the court deciding what cases that they are going to take. Uh, so the justices sit around a conference table and decide uh, uh, they'll review the various cases in which appeals are being brought to the Supreme Court. On a number of those cases, they have discretion whether to take those cases or not to take those cases. Uh, what I would try to do is be sure that all people, uh, all individuals, have equal access to the court uh, when making those decisions on what cases the Ohio Supreme Court uh, will take. During the campaign, voters will be asking you a lot of questions about specific issues. How will you answer these questions so that voters will have the information they need when they go to vote without violating the Judicial Ethics Code? Thank you for that question. Uh, I cannot talk about how I would rule on a particular issue uh, sitting as a Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court. However, as a legislator for 10 years, I have a legislative history, and I can talk about those things that I've worked on in the legislature and those things that I have voted on in the legislature. Uh, but the, the underwriting principle is that uh, as a justice to the Ohio Supreme Court, I must remain fair and, imbalance, and balanced, uh, fair and impartial. So that's uh, my role as a justice. As a legislator, it has been a different role. When it comes to sentencing, which do you prefer, judicial discretion or minimum mandatory sentencing? As a legislator in the Ohio uh, General Assembly, I have always advocated for judicial discretion. It is the judge that has the uh, individual who has been found guilty or, or pled guilty uh, before them. It is the judge that best knows uh, on how to impose a particular sentence. Uh, and I have uh, advocated against uh, uh, the minimum mandatory sentences, sometimes imposed by the General Assembly, that have gone too far uh, and put uh, 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 people that should not be behind, uh, bars, behind bars for a long period of time. We still have a foreclosure crisis in Ohio. It's been five years since the Supreme Court took the initiative to encourage attorneys across the state to represent homeowners in foreclosure cases and also to set up mediation programs in the counties. What will you do to review how that process has worked and to strengthen it going forward? I think that's exactly what needs to be done is to review how that process has worked uh, and there has not been an adequate review of whether the mediation uh, programs in the various counties have been established and whether they are working. Uh, the, the other portion is uh, the judiciary should actually bring proposals to the um, legislative branch on how best to deal the, with the foreclosure uh, crisis uh, in Ohio, trying to ensure that tenants uh, that are in a, in a particular home that's being foreclosed can remain in that home and just not throw it out on the streets uh, to ensure um, that if a family just needs a little bit more time uh, to put the finances together to stay in their home, that they have that time and, and also try to uh, increase the communication between the, the homeowner as well as the financial institution. The office of the Ohio Supreme Court is a highly influential position. I'd like to know three things about justices who are running for the Supreme Court. Number one, what has been your greatest accomplishment in administering justice? Number two, what has been your opponent's greatest accomplishment in administering justice? And number three, what has been the Ohio Supreme Court's greatest accomplishment in administering justice? 25 years as a practicing attorney, I have uh, stood up and, and uh, advocated and, and represented clients fighting against injustice. I have uh, represented uh, people 
that uh, are consumers and have been harmed, uh, individuals uh, that have been injured, uh, and trying to ensure that they have a, a right uh, a, and access to the court. Uh, my, my opponent, uh, his uh, work, uh, uh, 32 years as a judge, uh, he has uh, looked at various situations uh, to fight injustice. And um, uh, the greatest thing I, I think uh, that the court has done recently is to start examining the um, application of the death penalty here in Ohio. A number of the justices have raised issues and concerns about that, and uh, uh, that's going to be a great effort, uh, an effort that uh, other states have already uh, been involved with for some time. Hi, my name is Mike Skindle. I'm a state senator, have been a member of the General Assembly for 10 years, and a practicing attorney for 25 years, in which I have represented uh, folks that have been injured and, and consumers that have been harmed. Uh, I, as a, an attorney, have fought against injustice. As a legislator, I have uh, advocated injustice. As a Supreme Court justice, I will stand up against injustice in the Ohio Supreme Court. The court the reason I'm running is to bring uh, balance and fairness uh, to the Ohio Supreme Court. We have seven members of the Ohio Supreme Court, and I am a Democrat uh, running for the Supreme Court, and I'm running to ensure that we have balance in the court. Right now, we have no Democrats elected to the court. And when the justices sit around the conference table to decide what cases they will uh, bring and listen to the, uh, in the court and the decisions that they make on the court, uh, they do an injustice because there's only one perspective, one philosophy at that conference table. Uh, and I'm running to ensure that all voices are heard and all philosophies are brought uh, forward uh, in that discussion in the conference table there at the Ohio Supreme Court. Don't forget, if you live in Ohio, you have access to early voting to cast your ballot. To find out more, contact your local Board of Elections. Tom McKee, 9 News at the Ohio Supreme Court in Columbus.